Hey, welcome back to the Inside Alienation Project. I'm Maddie, and I talk about all things related to parental alienation here on my project. I was alienated from my dad for 20 years. I figured everything out last year, and since then, I've been speaking out about this form of abuse. Today, I'm going to try something a little bit different. I saw this tweet earlier today on Twitter, and it's from, from the Shara Research Group. Apparently, the Shara Research Group has now released some information, and I'm just going to be reacting to this blindly. Now, I have not read this document yet. I have not even looked into this yet, so I thought it might be more entertaining for people to see a former alienated child reacting to this big news blindly. So let's get into it. Shara says, it is with great pleasure we introduce our new framework, CAMS, CAMS, from parental alienation to abusers, child and mother sabotage, CAMS, as a preferable term for how perpetrator fathers intentionally sabotage the child-mother connection. Um, they've got this really wrong. A lot of fathers are alienated. This is really frustrating because people always make it a gender issue and then it's like, God, both genders are alienated. Get over it. Why don't you care about the children? So the fact that they're making this into a, a claiming it's just child and mother sabotage, like, are you kidding me? My mom sabotaged my relationship with my dad for 20 years. I'm already getting mad. Let's read this. From parental alienation to CAMS. CAMS is the stupidest acronym. So it says, this article is written to introduce the new term child and mother sabotage as an alternative to the problematic term parental alienation. I'm sure most of you guys know this, but th this is so problematic in family court because there are some abusers and exploiters who are now claiming parental alienation when they really have not been experiencing that at all. They're just saying that so they can give their child back. Now, here's my stance. Number one, exploiters will exploit anything. If you come up with a new term, CAMS, guess what? They're going to start explaining that term. But they made it specifically child and mother sabotage to prevent men from exploiting that term. So what's the term for father and child sabotage then? Are we going to have CAFs? CAFs? If we have CAMS, child and mother sabotage, we need to have CAFs child and father sabotage, because that's what happened to me. So where's calves, guys? Where's calves? I haven't even gotten one sentence through this stupid article, and I'm already mad. It says, we write to encourage people to avoid the use of the term PA or alienating behaviors. PA is currently widely used to refer to how some parents seek to deliberately undermine the other parent's relationship with their child. Unfortunately, allegations of PA are often used against mothers and children who report abuse by a father to the detriment of many families. Yes, this does happen. It's not only fathers exploiting the term either. I'm sure there are mothers in court that exploit this term too. Given that the use of the term parental alienation is so troublesome, it goes on to say that when an abusive parent deliberately manipulates or sabotages a child's relationship with their survivor parent, the term parental alienation should not be reused. Rather, this behavior needs to be framed in the context of the larger pattern of abuse. Okay, but my thing is, like, how are the kids going to figure it out, guys? How are the kids going to figure it out? For me personally, the term parental alienation last year resonated with me and allowed me to figure everything out. And this is not limited to my experience. I've spoken to dozens of other child survivors who've said the same thing. The term itself, parental alienation, resonates with those children who have been through this abuse. What more do experts or researchers or this dumb organization, what more do they need? Shouldn't they just care about the children? Shouldn't they just care about them figuring it out, them getting support, them getting help? Parental alienation resonates with the children. In my mind, that should be enough. By the way, targeted parents know what's going on. It may be done at first, but they understand eventually what's happening to them and their child. Their children don't know. Don't, they don't have the first clue what's happening the majority of the time. So when you do find out that you've been through parental alienation, you go on a Google search, like we do with everything these days. You do a Google search, and when you Google parental alienation, all of the literature, the research studies, the experts support everything. The information is there online because that's the term that has been used 
for 30 plus years. And now they're trying to change the term to CAMS, C-A-M-S. If I had heard the term child and mother sabotage last year, I absolutely would not have figured out what happened to me because I did not experience child and mother sabotage. I experienced father and child sabotage. So they're saying that we shouldn't use parental alienation, quote, because many abusive fathers deliberately sabotage the child-mother relationship. Okay, so here they outline three major problems with the use of parental alienation in the term. Oh my god, by the way, it's so frustrating to me that this is the conversation they're pouring all this money into. Instead of actually helping these children, they're talking about a term. Two words. Two words. Useless. Shara. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but share an organization, useless. They say, number one, that the scientific credibility of the term has been found to be entirely lacking and problematic. There may be many papers on parental alienation and alienating behaviors, but the problems with the science underpinning these studies have never been addressed adequately. It's actually not true. There's, there's a bunch of scientifically sound research studies proving the existence of parental alienation and its form of child abuse. The second thing, reason they give is they say, number two, the use of parental alienation by allegedly abusive fathers against mothers seeking to protect their children has caused extensive harm to mothers and children worldwide. I'm not denying that there are exploiters in court. Just because exploiters can exploit something in court doesn't mean it doesn't exist doesn't mean that we should change the term. So for my example, um, my story, I was alienated from my dad for 20 years. It wasn't my mom that I was alienated from. She was abusive. She was the abuser. Children and mother sabotage? That's not what I went through. I've started a support group. We have about 20 members now. All but, I think, two of us were alienated from our fathers. And None of us went through CAMS. All of us went through parental alienation. The third reason is, not the, for them is they say the use of parental alienation is also profoundly gendered. They say it is commonly used by abusive fathers to defend against abuse. They literally have the same reason for the third as the, for the second. These are baloney reasons. Actually, this is insane. So this article goes on to say, it is important to recognize that parental alienation is only the most recent concept in a long history of misguided concepts in the medical or psychological fields, which have been originally touted as helpful, but ultimately recognized as harmful. Listen to this. It says, for instance, thalidomide, a treatment for morning sickness, removed from the market in 1961 after it was found to lead to birth defects and infant deaths in children. This is an example that they're equating with parental alienation, a medication that was given to pregnant women. They're equating that to severe psychological abuse. Make it make sense. Whether or not you change the term parental alienation, this abuse exists. You can't compare, I'm sorry, you can't compare severe psychological abuse of a child to a medication. Full stop. <laughs> okay, this, I think this goes to a, like a wider problem in society. Like these feminists, these, these third wave feminists and these activists for, for Shara, for VAWA, for all these organizations that claim they're helping women and children, they're, they also want to cover up that women that women can be abusive too. They're literally trying to erase the possibility that a mother could turn their child against their father by just changing parental alienation into child and mother sabotage. This is crazy. Goes on to give like a list of qualities that would make it child and mother sabotage. And one of these qualities is they say a clearly mapped history and evidence of a pattern of power and control, coercive control, between the perpetrator father and the victim mother. <laughs> this is the whole reason why I believed my mom. The victim mentality all the time and I felt really bad for her, but she was actually the abuser. This is terrible. This is garbage. They're trying to get rid of abusers exploiting parental alienation and the abuse in court by saying it's just a mother and child issue so that fathers can't claim CAMS 
in court. That's what they're trying to do. Um, so they're making it so that fathers cannot claim that they're being alienated in court. That's literally what they're doing. It's disgusting. This is disgusting. Oh, this should be good. Why create the term CAMS to deal specifically with male on female abuse? What about men? Yeah, what about men? What about my dad? What about the 20 years that I lost with him? What about that? So their answer, what about men? Here's what they have to say. To counteract the prevalent idea that alienation is something that vengeful ex-wives do to ex-husbands, we believe that the undermining of children's relationships with their parent is most commonly the product of a larger abusive pattern by men against women. Oh God, it's not, that's not true. There is little, if any, actual empirical evidence that many mothers deliberately alienate their children from their fathers to hurt their fathers. This is like, these people are denying everything I've been through, everything. It's not just me either. Like everything, a ton, millions of kids have gone through. They must really hate men. They say women as a group are far more subject to partner abuse than men. Generally, they're physically and economically less powerful than men. Why do you need to be a freaking victim all the time? Why do you need to do that? Why do you need to be a victim all the time? So their answer is, it doesn't happen to men. It doesn't happen to children and their fathers. I'm just imagining my dad and the years that we lost, the decades that we lost, and these feminists, these disgusting, unethical feminists who, uh, they hate men. I mean, I can't think of any other reason why you would spread such misinformation, such lies, blatant lies. That's all for this video. Please leave your thoughts and reactions below in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up to get it in the algorithm and subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing here. And if you are a child survivor of parental alienation, please email me at the anti project at gmail.com to become part of the support group I've created for child survivors of parental alienation. Thank you everyone for watching. It means so much to me and I appreciate your time. I'll see you next time. Bye.